Good evening, class. My name is Pam Turner. I'll be the moderator for this evening's lecture. And welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, in the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our president, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improper, improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. 
The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Intent is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This evening we will have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Lee Dora Nicholas. And we will have a musical selection by Lisa Zyvey. Um, I did notice a text, okay. Okay, yeah, I saw Lisa come in. All right, so we should be good. Did, is Lidora on? I was no, on. she's not on. Oh, she's not on. Okay, Dr. Carol Miller can do the prayer. And then we'll have a uh, scripture reading by Dr. Jennifer Marshall, which is Romans the 10th chapter. Okay, let's bow our hearts and minds. Ask Yahshua to keep us steadfast in this gospel. Thank him for giving us these Zoom classes so that we can continue meeting and learning and discussing his purpose and plan. And we ask that he keep us safe and um, vigilant. With that, I'm going to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you guys hear me now? Yep. Okay, thanks. Doing a song we all love and know. Hello, child, hear my word. I am Yahweh. Let your heart find rest. I've waited just for you. Listen and hear clearly. I am far away. Just listen. Just listen to the way. 
Great, thank you. We're we'll reading from the Holy Name Bible, containing the, I'm sorry, excuse me, containing, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with, with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, advised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Brandywine Mountain. Romans, the 10th chapter. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. For the Messiah is the end of the sacrificial law for the obtaining of righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring the Messiah down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up the Messiah again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh, nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Yahweh is the Messiah, and shalt believe in thine heart that Yahweh hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and in the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the law, I mean, between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Elohim over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be delivered. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the glad tidings of peace and bring glad tidings to good thing, of good things. But they have not all obeyed the evangel. For Israel saith, Yahweh, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing the word of Yahweh. 
But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the end of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by an enlightened nation I will anger you. But Israel is very bold and saith, I'm sorry, I, it's, but Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found by them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But he saith to, Yah, uh, to, uh, but he saith to Israel, All day long I have stretched forth my hand unto a disobe disobedient and gainsaying people. Romans, the 10th chapter. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'd like to call for our first speaker, Teresa Gavush. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's always a pleasure um, to sup with brethren and um, speak about the gospel that we've all had to learn, um, how the scripture was saying we've had to be taught. Um, this just isn't given. Um, and we had to be very, very grateful and um, realize this great gift that um, we, we have right here at our fingertips um, to be able to see um, th this teaching. Um, I have a three-year-old that's um, mocking me, <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I, I'm extremely um, tired this evening. However, um, you know, it's not about us. It's about getting out this teaching. So let's go ahead and try to dig into a little bit of the, um, the reading that we had. So you go ahead and start at one. Romans 10 and one. Brethren. My heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. Okay, so here, you know, this this is this should be our heart's desire too for everyone to be able to have an understanding of this teaching. Um, but they're they're saying they have a zeal, but it's but it's that blind zeals they they don't it's not of knowledge. Um, like they all have this blind belief um, that, you know, they don't have the understanding um, that we have in this class out here in the world of, you know, th they have a zeal. Can somebody look up the word zeal? Okay, I have Ari. It's a great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of, um, and they're pursuing, but, you know, as this scripture goes on, you know, it's not just something, it has to be presented to you and taught to you. Um, so keep reading. Um, for they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. Okay, so a lot of people out in the world go after their own righteousness, like posting, oh, look what good I'm doing, you know, going and, you know, getting people stuff. And, you know, it's, it's like an outward praise. And I'm not saying it's bad, but, you know, it's, it's more of, you know, doing it in a way to be acknowledged or, um, you know, um, read that one more time, please. For they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Have okay, not so, so right there, it's, they're, they're trying, they don't know of Yahweh and his righteousness and what he's, um, <laughs> because we're his tabernacles, he works through us. So it's coming to understanding of the Holy Spirit that abides and dwells within us. That's, that, that's 
you know, the ultimate righteousness is to know who he is, to know him. That that's what he asks of us. And people go around trying to pursue their own righteousness and um, showing more than it being more internally, having an inward struggle, but are showing on the outward that, um, you know, that praise and, um, uh, th but not really understanding. Keep going. Wait, wait, stop that. Um, okay. So I'm going to pick it up. That's fine. You being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. For the Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. So that right there, just saying that whatever was written in the law and the prophets, Yahweh came, Yahshua came to fulfill. And everything that he came to fulfill is now out of the way. And all that um, sacrificing and um, everything that was written in the law is now um, fulfilled. So um, read that one more time. For the Messiah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So whoever believe upon Yahshua, he knows that he came to fulfill. And now it's more of what's within. Um, I'm a little bit of everywhere tonight. I'm sorry. Um, so it's, oh, let me slow down. Um, so Yahshua has put an end to things. And a lot of people are believing that Yahshua came to start things and institute things. And we know that is not so um, by this teaching and being shown that. Um, and that's the only way we come out of that is by learning and um, coming to the classes and reading and studying to know that, you know, um, and being taught by someone that has been shown the vision and for us to get out there and show to whomever Yahweh puts within us to speak to in regards to what we have learned. Um, because, you know, it, it does, it's, it's like um, yes. how I was just watching something even about, um, you know, white privilege, you know, it, you don't know that you don't know until it's made known, you know, it's like, um, it, it was just about being in that bubble, not really knowing anything and thinking that everything's okay. And what you're doing is okay. And, you know, everything that is, is set right there for you. So you're oblivious to things, but until it's made known, like a little light bulb goes on, wow, I didn't realize, you know, or um, I, it, it's oblivious. So that's kind of how this teaching is, you know, um, Yahweh has chosen a certain few. So when, like I said, we had to just be very thankful of um, what we've been shown. Um, keep reading. For Moses describes the righteousness, which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Okay, the so say that say that one more time. He said, For yeah. Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Okay, keep going. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, yeah, say is. not in thy heart, who shall ascend unto heaven? That is to bring the Messiah down from above. Thank you. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up the Messiah again from the dead. And, you know, it's like we abide with him and we're in him. So, you know, it's um, he's like the whole ascending and descending. It's like he is, you know, he's that spirit. And it's um, it's more of what's um there's going to be a, a revelation you know and that revelation is going to be either to righteousness or damnation um and it's it's like um sorry a little loss of words here like i said i'm really sorry so everything's kind of like um coming but um keep going but what say it the the world is the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart 
That is the word of faith, which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Yahshua Messiah and shall believe in thy heart that Yahweh have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with thy heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with thy mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Yahweh over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Okay. I'm going to stop you there. Um, I, my three-year-old's running around everywhere, and um, I'm, I'm just going to have to yield the floor because I'm not 100% present. Um, but I do want to hear from other speakers. I apologize. Um, I, I just... You know, as Tara was just saying, you know, it's it's in our hearts um, and in our minds um, what he wants of us. Um, and I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm going to have to yield the floor. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Teresa. Our next speaker will be Anthony Oliver. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's going to be, it's gonna be short. Uh, I just say I'm, I'm happy to be uh, able to hear anything uh, about our Savior, Yash Messiah, uh, that he hope, hopefully, uh, you know, I'm a past of a time and uh, that we might just uh, receive his grace and mercy because uh, I'm working right now. Thank you for the opportunity and praise Joshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Anthony. Our next speaker will be uh, Darlene Webster. Yes, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep, we can hear you. Oh, great, great. Hallelujah. All praises unto Yahweh for even having anything to um, say say about him is is a blessing within itself, and um, I definitely can understand <laughs> the uh, the I'll pass on two um, two speakers. And Teresa, it's so good to hear from you because I haven't heard from you, <laughs> and it's so good to hear hear your voice at at, at least. And you also, Anthony, all praise unto Yahweh for, for what you what you had to say for it for tonight. And just to just acknowledge your, yourselves is a blessing within itself. I am so grateful. Um and I too I, I'm not at this distracted like, like you are tonight, other than what other than with my own. Um, personal thoughts, but it's it's a lot here in um, Romans, the um, the tenth chapter. Just reading over um, some of, of what um, was um, read, I was I was late um, logging on, so it I did not um, hear all of the um, of that uh, particular um, book. But what I what I did hear. It's it's um it's it does say a lot because just like Teresa was um was saying and in the uh, scripture when it's there where it's saying it's saying that um, Yahweh um if you could get that the the um, scripture that she had called in reference to Yahweh from above and Yahweh from 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 beneath. Oh, okay, that's six. Okay, thank you, thank you, Tara. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring the Messiah down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up the Messiah again from the dead. Now right there, just those two scriptures, just hearing that, it just brought to to my mind, where we are right now during these trying times, 
That's what came to my heart and mind. Because there are those that are out here and not just out in the world. I can relate to both scriptures personally because there are times when, and there were times when we were, or, we, or people may be in that state right now where to them, it's the faith speaking on why, on this wise and from um, who shall ascend into heaven. And it, it has, and, uh, in reference to just the righteousness, which is the faith speaking, speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Now, there are people who really spiritually uh, believe and think that they are in, in a place that is, that is on high, that they do know their, their God or their m m Messiah, um, only that he ab ab abodes within a, a, a higher place, an exalted place a place that they um, perceive as being as being um, heaven to them. Well, and then there are those where we, um, that are feel as though that they are just lost and are in the, the depths of, of hell, of hellish places, and that they have absolutely a, a feeling of despair or a feeling of, of just not having hope. But we know that that's not true in reference to Yahweh and that Yahweh abides wherever you are in whatever state you may be in um, and whatever you may believe um, that he is all in all and that he is the epitome of, of all things. He is the, um, he, he exceeds all, our thoughts are not his thoughts, are not his thoughts at all. We, we think based on our experiences and even our experiences don't even touch upon the depth, the heights and the depths of, of our um, heavenly father, of Yahweh. But it's, it's really, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot and it's, I'm trying to really put it into words the way that I understand it and what has been shown to, to me because I've been in the in states of where I thought that I would never be heard. Um, my despair would be what was, was to me was just that overwhelming. And and then there are times when I thought that okay, I all, the only time I ever felt as though that I was um, even worthy enough to understand anything of Yahweh was when when I was when I was introduced to this this gospel, and that I am so grateful of because Yahweh can put you through some things to make you realize that there is nothing worthy here. There is absolutely nothing worthy to hold on to here. And it's only through him that, that where we, that there is hope. And we know that it is because there's much more than just what we see, what we can touch, what we, is much, so much more to it. So he's using everything that to, that is that is of all of our senses 
to put it that way, all of our senses for us to understand him, to understand something of him. And that's how merciful he is. So he can go for to whatever heights, to whatever depths that our minds our our minute minds go and he can still reach any any of us so no one is in a place of where you cannot be lifted and given hope so there's nothing in this world as we see it as we see it that can keep us from him and to keep us from that understanding that we need in order for us to be, to have and to know and to learn more and more and more, no matter what he chooses for us, because he has that personal relationship with each and every last one of us. With those few words, I hope someone receives something from that from that, um, and I too, I'm, I'm going to relinquish the um, the floor, but, but I do hope that someone receives something from what I had to say, and all praises unto Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you. Our next speaker will be Pam Turner. Good evening, everybody. I really enjoyed the previous speakers. And I'll just kind of pick it up um, in the scripture reading where they left off. Well, may actually back it up a little bit. We can start back at one. And I just want to make a few comments about the scripture. Hey, Romans 10 and 1. Brethren, my heart's desire a prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. Okay, I'm going to be interrupting, so I'm just going to sprinkle in some comments here, and um, it's just exciting to me just to have anything to say because of the fact that just coming out of the world and having been in the, you know, raised in the Catholic Church and just the fact that I can even have any comments at all is just mind blowing to me. So, <laughs> but um, so you know, prior to this, I would try to read the Bible prior to coming into class, you know, years ago, it's probably been about 20 years now. But, you know, I would sit there and I didn't even know who was, who was talking and when they were talking and what they were talking about. And I mean, I had no clue. So, um, so in this scripture here, we have um, what's referred to as an epistle by Paul, who did have a vision and a revelation direct from Yahshua. And he's, and his people are um, the Hebrews. And he's trying to impart to them, you know, he's just has such a desire that they might be saved because salvation to them, you know, before he was received this vision and revelation, all he knew salvation as was it was according to a law a physical law it was doing something and so now he's seen a, he, he's he's received some information about Yahweh's purpose and plan through Yahshua and he wants to impart this to his brethren so keep going brethren mm -hmm. my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved for I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. Okay, so they have a zeal. That means they're, I mean, they're just all about um, the, the rules and regulations and, and following that law. And, and they, you know, and he says it's not according to knowledge. Well, what does that mean? So, because I mean, they they grew up with the law. They knew, they, they knew the, what the law is. So you can argue that, well, how did they not have any knowledge? But mm -hmm. knowledge, according to Yahweh, um, under this new mm -hmm. covenant, is that mm -hmm. um, it's knowledge according to the spirit and right. um, being converted from a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. And that's the Thank true you. knowledge. Mm -hmm. So keep going. 
3, for they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. You're right. So here, the reason why they're, they're now they're ignorant about Yahweh's righteousness. And this is another thing that would could be hard, really hard to understand because when they received the the physical law at Mount Sinai through Moses back there. And, you know, the righteousness at that time was doing what Yahweh asked them to do. Mm -hmm. And so how could they be ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness, right? They know, knew all about it, supposedly. But now, you know, so Paul is trying to explain to them this new way. New which ways. is what which is what Yahweh intended all along. Mm -hmm. So um, now righteousness. Um, I just wanted to just talk about what what that means. Um, you know, there's that scripture. Um, there's um, not one righteous or something. No, not one. Or our righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an Isaiah. If anybody knows where that is, if you, you get that, but so, the, so see what happened is, and, and Yahweh knew this was going to happen when He set up His entire purpose. He knew that mankind was going to go about to establish their own righteousness. Okay. Oh, oh, that's right. Joel said it, and then you guys, he's, he's muted. Isaiah, yep. did you say 64 and 6? Okay. Isaiah 64 and 6, he said? Yep. Sorry, you guys. Oh, that's okay. Have it. <laughs> Not a thick Bible here. I have it right here, too. I can read it real okay. quick. Isaiah 64. Oh, go ahead. Oh, oh, you can go ahead if you have it. Six, Isaiah 64 and 6. But we are all as unclean things, and all of our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Right. So in, the, in this, you know, unless you have the Holy Spirit, I mean, this applies <laughs> to, to all of us. And... um. Did you want the other one? Um, that's okay. We can just, I, I wasn't going to belabor the, this, these points really, but just wanted to pick it up. But there's the, no, the other one that says no, not one is righteous. And that can be picked up in the book. It's Romans 3 and 10. It's 3. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so that's okay. We can just keep moving along. You guys can take note of that. And um, so... So righteousness, you know, as far as they were concerned, was fulfilling or doing the works of the law at that time. And there was no one that could actually do that. <laughs> That's the thing. That's, there was a catch there. And so keep, go ahead and keep reading, Jennifer. Cool. Well, mm -hmm. Yahshua is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. For Moses mm -hmm. describeth the righteousness which is of the law that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Right. And that's what I was talking about. That that's, you know, that's the way he described the righteousness, which is, which um, was of the law. Now back up to four, it says that Yahshua is the end of the law for righteousness. And that's what we've learned in this school is that the purpose of the Messiah was to come in and end the first covenant or that law at Mount Sinai and to bring in the new covenant which is a a better way all right so keep going for moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law that the man which doeth those things shall live by them but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring yashua down from above or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up the Messiah again from the dead. Okay, so this right here, so he is um, quoting out of Deuteronomy, because I can see it that's in my margin, and Deuteronomy 30 and 12. 
And when you look back there, so if you look at 30 and 12, if you just read a little bit of that. Deuteronomy 30 and 12. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Okay, can you just keep reading? Mm -hmm. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say it, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Mm -hmm. The word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. So the word is very nigh or near unto thee. And if you look before this too, just, I'm, uh, you know, we, we're not going to read any of it, but just kind of scanning just prior to this, it's just talking about, it's just all, all about the do's and the don'ts and the law. Thou shall do this, thou shall do that. And it's all physical stuff. Um, but it, it is, it does kind of mention circumcising the heart though. See, see the, <laughs> the thing that's so cool is that even though everything was set up back here with the children of Israel and this physical law, Yahweh always had a way of sprinkling in the foreshadowing of the spiritual. He would refer to people as souls, or he would talk about circumcising the heart mm -hmm. and, um, you know, love and things like that. And, and then, you know, especially getting into the prophets, it's just a repetition of these things that we're going to see and um, which, which I'll get into a little bit more, but um, so, so this is kind of talking about, you know, that, that physical, what they had back there physically. So now keep going. Um, you can start at eight. Eight. But what saith it that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart that it, that is the word of faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Yahshua the Messiah, and shall believe in thine heart, that Yahshua hath, Yahweh hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Right. So this is a complete um, 180 degrees from who he's talking to here, his brethren, his heart's desire for Israel. This is a complete 180 degrees from what they have known their whole lives. Just like somebody coming out of the Catholic church. And Lisa was talking about this the other day, how, you know, like when it occurred, she came into class and it occurred to her how every single thing that they're doing all came out of the tabernacle and that that was mind blowing. And it's freaking true. It's just like, you just want people in the world to wake up. Because when you go in and read this stuff, the thing that blew my mind when I, more than anything when I came into class is, is that, you know, okay, you hear some guy had a vision and then, oh, blah, blah, blah. And, but then when you start looking at what he's saying, and then you start reading in the New Testament and everything that there's, that Paul's saying is exactly what Dr. Henley was saying. And it matched up. I know it does take a revelation to see that, but it's just, oh man, you just want to show people and open it up to them so bad. It's so frustrating. You know, I know Lisa talks about how she'll talk to people at work or various people, you know, or like Sherry will talk about <laughs> these people that she comes into contact with. And you want so bad to just be able to show them something. Uh, so anyways, so like I was saying, this is 180 degrees opposite here, what he's saying, because he says, um, he, here he's talking about the word of faith, which we preach, okay? And that's the reality of what was being talked about back in Deuteronomy, was just a type. So back there, that law was just a type of a spiritual law. So here, and then he says, so all you have to do is confess with your mouth, Yahshua, the Messiah, and believe in thine heart that Yahweh raised him from the dead. And that, and that that's your salvation right there. How can they hear that? I mean, can you imagine that they, their whole lives are like, we have to do the law and that's our salvation. And so to accept this, you can see how it has to be by a revelation. It's not something 
you know, he has to show you. And it's not, it's not something that you can just choose to believe. And, um, you know, to them, um, well, let, let's just keep going. So keep reading in here. Um, I think we're going to stop at 10, yeah. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Right. And so, okay, so stop there. Now, the thing is, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the reality of what this is saying, but the thing that's difficult here, and you can see this now, if you've been in class for a while, and, and, you, and if you have any background in Christianity, whether it's Pentecostal or Baptist, or just like, you know, the Catholic Church or something, see, it says, you know, they, they want to believe they want to just say to you, accept Jesus into your heart and you'll be saved. That's all you have to do. Yeah. They only get it partially right. <laughs> but that is true. But there's some things that have to happen in order for that to actually be able to be a reality in you. And then this thing about, you know, confession is made unto salvation with your mouth, right? So they, in the Catholic church, they have these booths set up where you confess something with your mouth and to a priest and that's supposed to contribute to your salvation somehow. So everything's kind of taken literally here. Um, so keep reading at 11. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. for, there is, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Yahweh over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Mm -hmm. And so this is talking about, and this is another thing that was hard for them to swallow. Um, you know, Paul's physical brethren growing up, you know, they, everybody that wasn't physically Jewish was just, they were a, a heathen, you know? So this is a whole other thing though, but just that could be worked with, but the fact that Yahweh, you know, ultimately um, he intended to, to have many saved not just the jews but they they just kind of got the ball rolling okay go ahead in 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of yahweh shall be saved or yashua mm -hmm. for then shall they call on him whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher mm -hmm. so so he's saying again repeating so this just sounds like you know someone can read this and say all i have to do is call upon the lord and then i'm going to be saved right but then it goes on and then it talks about well how can you call on him how how can you call on him in whom they have not believed well wait a minute can i just work up on believing but what you learn in the school is that belief is, it has a lot of requirements behind it it's not just choosing to believe it's not just saying well like when you're a little kid and you say well uh, i believe in santa claus <laughs> right. you don't know anything about him <laughs> you don't know you don't even know that you're supposed to have like proof of something to believe in it you're just it sounds good so you believe it right and that's where they're coming from but and it's but then it says and how shall they believe in whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher? So this is where Paul is introducing to them this concept of, of hearing. See, to, the, to Israel, faith to them was by doing, it wasn't by hearing. It was, it was like you had to do, 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 do. And, and that's been carried over. You know, like going to... Um, this chart here the carnal ordinances so we will say how you know all these things on the left they're carried over to here that the dragon you know the dragon satan the devil the dragon he's dragged them on over all these physical things because they want to do in order to have faith and believe and be saved but really all you need is to hear and that's a completely different concept the, just the hearing, you know, we, we, we talk about faith is by hearing. Uh, that's coming up here. Um, and I wanted to just get a couple scriptures. Um, it's that, um, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's an Isaiah who hath believed our report. 
Mm-hmm. Just to see. pick it up in the pockets. Mm-hmm. I guess in the law, it would be... Uh, Isaiah 53 and yeah, 1. Yeah, go. Yeah, Isaiah 53 and 1. Okay. See, they heard they- from the mountain, I just wanted to say, you know, they heard, you know, they they heard and they said, we'll do everything that you say, Yahweh. Mm-hmm. So, but they really didn't have faith. I mean, it didn't really culminate until, you know, it had to come down to a point to where they had to have the right heart in them, you know, ultimately. But, but this is like I keep saying, it's everything's being set up and then it's going to come into fulfillment in the spiritual reality once Yahshua comes in. So um, I'm going to get over to where you are. It's Isaiah 53. And one. And one. Thank you. Go ahead. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. Um, actually, I think that I, I'm not. I don't think this is the one that I wanted, actually. I was thinking I wanted the one that's like line upon line and all that. Oh, that's um, Isaiah uh, 20. Yeah, my mistake. While while we're over here, while we're over here, though, let's go to 55. Because there's a couple good things over here. Isaiah 55. Yeah, this kind of ties in with it, too. So uh, let me see here. Okay, so. So go ahead and just um, read a little bit in 55, starting at 1. Isaiah 55 and 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Yes, without money and without price. So that goes along with, that's the faith by hearing, not doing. It's, it's free under this covenant. And this is just a foreshadowing of that. Go ahead. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Mm-hmm. Incline your ear and come unto me here and your soul shall live yes here yeah here it's talking all about hearing in romans where we were it's, it's here it's, it's, he gets all this he's constantly in the prophet in the law and the prophets paul is go keep reading sorry and i will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of david okay that's good and he also i mean it's all so good but he talks about seek yahweh while he may be found, call upon him while he's near. My thoughts are not your thoughts. It's all so good. But let's go to where the, it's that um, it has that line upon line. 8, 20. 28 and 9. Precept the prompt precept line? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, so start. Let me see where I want to start. Yeah, whom shall he teach knowledge? That's what I was thinking, not the other one. Sorry. <laughs> Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And I'm just going to interject here. Um, we don't have to go get it, but we all, we p- uh, quote all the time Isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them or revelation of truth, which is in the margin. So this is this is figurative of um drawn from the wean from the milk and drawn from the breast, the breast of the law and the prophets. Okay, keep going. Or precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Uh Uh-huh, so he's talking about precepts. So precepts are principles. And what is this whole thing of all about when we get to the spiritual reality and we, we go back to the law and the prophets and we learn about the principles that point to Yahshua, the Messiah and, and Yahweh's purpose and plan. That's the, that's the whole thing. And that's the hearing. So keep going. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. 
to whom he said, this is the rest for with we may cause the weary to rest. Mm -hmm. so this is refreshing. Yet they would not hear. They would not hear. So this is right along with what we were just talking about. How Paul, this is my heart's desire for Israel, that they might be saved. And they're not hearing. Um, they don't grasp that, that it's by hearing and it, that, that let the law is fulfilled. And this is the message he's trying to get out. So keep going. In Isaiah? Yeah, keep going in that same spot. Okay. 12, to whom he said, this is the rest for with, okay, I already did that. 13, but the word of Yahweh was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon mm -hmm. line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Right. And that's what's happened. And these, these precepts, these principles and these lines, you know, we line them up according to blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection. And this is what proves out this gospel. Now, back in Romans, let's see here. Romans 10. Okay. So let's pick up where we were. No, I'll just say a little bit more and wrap it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Romans 10 and 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Mm -hmm. So how shall they preach except they be sent? So this is Yahweh's work in this whole thing where the preachers are sent by Yahweh the hearers are just, they're just given this by grace. And the, the feet of them is the foundation that are preaching this gospel. And, and um, go ahead and keep reading. 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Yahweh, who have believed our report, yeah, <laughs> which we actually did get. That's cool. <laughs> Go mm -hmm. ahead. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Yahweh. Yep. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Yahweh. So, um, you know, and it made me think about also just this, it, it ties in with grace. And you know, this entire thing is by grace. And I was reading a, a transcript, one of the mo more recent ones that there's, I think two that have been released, they've been transcribed. It's, I know that there's over 40 of the new tapes or <laughs> tape is the old way to say it, but <laughs> recordings. And anyways, um, so there's a couple transcribed ones. And then, and, you know, and he was talking about in here how he explains how he was hung up on grace, you know, and, and he actually, that's why he was kicked out of the church that he was in because he did not agree with the pastor. And mm -hmm. even at that time, and he admits that he knew the Bible inside and out, but that he didn't have an understanding. And it, it just made me think about this, what I had just recently read, um, it's really good. I don't know if I should read this, but um, I, I kind of want to leave more time for some other people. But um, let me just maybe if I can just read a little bit in here because it just talks about the grace thing. Um, let me see here. OK, so this is um, I'll just read a couple excerpts because it, it just ties in with with this that the whole point of this whole thing is that it's by the grace of Yahweh that we know anything and that it's not by you doing works. It's, it's not by, you know, this is what he's trying to show them. He's like, you know, like the scripture said, this is the rest. And he wanted them so bad to see it. And so Dr. Kinley is talking about how he was a minister in the church of God. And it's just right on the very first page. And, um, he even had a gift of healing. So, 
you know, that that's a lot right there. I, I mean, so he had to have really ticked off this pastor to, to for the pastor to get rid of him and he could heal people because that that brings a lot of people into the congregation and we all know it's all about money right mm -hmm. so he really i mean but he just couldn't see it so he says well now to me you see i i believed in god but i had no i had not seen anything so he recognized he didn't really see any re anything oh i'm sorry so this is um this was transcribed by shannon brewster it was, was sent out in an email and it says February 27th, 1969. It's either SoundCloud 14 or Dropbox number 31. And he says, we, we fell out, my pastor and I, we fell out about two, about two works of grace. So it wasn't just one, <laughs> one work of grace. It was two. And I, yeah, I'm saying that <laughs> right there. I'm just saying that, that it's, that it's not one, but two. All right. And so Dr. Kinley said, and I just couldn't see that. Now, here's how two works of grace works to explain it to you right quick. Now, he said what you had to do was to receive Jesus first. And when you did that, you were justified by faith. Then you had to go on indefinitely. He couldn't tell me no time. And then you become a recipient of the Holy Spirit. Then you were sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Now, to receive him, that was justification to receive the Holy Spirit. That was sanctification. Now, this is the way I saw it. I saw that he was not a man walking around on the face of the earth for me to walk up to or he, he to come to me, approach me, you understand, and for me to ac accept him and be justified in that. And I recall that the Apostle Paul said, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, Although we have known him after the flesh, but henceforth know we no man after the flesh, not even Yahshua the Messiah. Or to you who don't understand, we, we don't know Jesus Christ that way. Now, I saw it as an uttermost impossibility for me to receive him as a man in the flesh and feared to do it in this present dispensation because I did not think that he was walking around on the earth like that. It was my understanding that he ascended into heaven itself or he had entered into the most holy place. He had taken off the flesh and he walked as of then and now a quickening spirit. And it was my understanding that when I received that quickening spirit, I thought that that was sufficient. Now, when it comes to a work of grace, now I'm employing words. Now, to me, grace was not a work. I couldn't see the first work to say nothing about the second work because it was my understanding that he did the works and it was by faith in him being the one that Yahweh did send in the world to do away with the flesh, that all of us, all nations on the face of the earth must live in the spirit. So I just thought that was, was pretty and kind of tied in with what Paul's saying here. So I'm going to go ahead and end it there and I look forward to hearing the next speaker. Hey, thank you, uh, mm -hmm. Pam. Um, for our next speaker, I'd like to call on the Dean of Ithaca, New York, Dr. Robert White. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes, sir. Okay, good. Uh, jury class thus far. Um, let's go back to the scripture lesson. Bring it up at one, please. Romans 10 and 1. Brethren. My heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. Now, what nationality was Paul? He was a Jew. He was a Jew. Or an Israelite. And his heart's desire. So he desired. And his prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved didn't say they were going to be saved, but his desire, heart's desire was that they might be saved. Go ahead. Well, I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. Now, before Paul's conversion, when he was still under the old covenant, did he have a zeal for Yahweh? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
so much to the point where he felt that he was right and the newly converted Yashuans were wrong and he sought permission to put them in captivity and he even had some put to death. That's pretty zealous. Mm -hmm. But he's doing it in the name of Yahweh, believing that he was part of Yahweh's righteousness. So now here's Paul, firsthand experience saying, for I bear them record or witness that they have a zeal for Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. Did Paul get a wake up call on his way to Damascus? Mm -hmm. Turned him around. He realized that he was wrong. Right. Joshua appeared unto him and said, why are you persecuted? Go ahead and read. For they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness. Now here's the problem. As Paul once was ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness, he's talking about his fellow countrymen. For they being ignorant of Yahweh's righteousness. Read. And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. Now, why haven't they submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh? You can unmute yourself and answer if you want. I got no problem with that. In fact, I'd rather you do. They was go still going by the law. They don't the have the Holy Spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit. No, they don't right. have the Holy Spirit. That's correct. But what's causing them not to seek after the righteousness of Yahweh or submit themselves into the righteousness of Yahweh. It's right in right right above there. They're too busy Not according doing to what? knowledge. They're too busy doing what? Establishing their own. Establishing their own rightness. Go to the head mm -hmm. of the class. <laughs> and they're so busy trying to establish their own righteousness. Now look folks, this is something that we're familiar with coming out of the churches. Me and my righteousness. Well, I don't steal. I've never killed anybody. I, I follow the Ten Commandments. Uh, I, 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 I tithe. I do. How about that? Me and my righteousness. Sound mm -hmm. familiar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's something just that we can, we can examine and see ourselves coming from that same place. Now, um, the 28th chapter of Acts, um, try 22 and 23. X. Now, when you approach someone whom you care about, a friend, a colleague, a relative, and you try and tell them about this gospel, and they're already uh, going to church and doing all the things that they've been taught since they're a little kid. Don't you get resistant? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because they believe that what they're doing is right. So you can't tell them nothing. My son used to have an expression as a teenager. You know, if you don't know something, ask a teenager because they know everything. <laughs> I, I chastise them about something. and go, Dad, I know all about it. Mm -hmm. and say, yeah, you sure do. <laughs> Not. Mm. All right. Um, yes, please. Acts 28 and 22. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him and to his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of Yahweh, persuading them concerning Yahshua, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning to evening. Now, who are they talking about here? The previous, the previous speaker just said it. 
if you read up a little bit, this is Paul when he was incarcerated. And they wanted to hear about what Paul was teaching of this sect they didn't know anything about. And there was controversy in the beginning of this age by the preaching of this gospel that you and I now preach. So when they gave him an audience and allowed him to speak, what did he speak? Read the 23rd verse again. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him unto his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of Yahweh, persuading them concerning Yahshua, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning to evening. And he was just getting warmed up. That's the Apostle Paul, folks. So now who's the author of the 10th chapter of Romans? Paul. 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 So now when you know this about the Apostle Paul, and you're reading any of his letters or epistles to the brethren in the beginning of this age, what should come to mind immediately? He's not writing in vain. He's writing about what his firsthand experiences are and what he knows about Yahweh's purpose in the law and in the prophets. That's the key. That's my secret. I'm sitting here listening to the other speakers and I'm saying, well, now, where's Paul looking at in the law and the prophets when he's writing this epistle? Mm -hmm. Remember Nadab and Abihu? Mm -hmm. They were Aaron's two sons, Moses' two nephews. Now, did Yahweh kill them? Yeah. They went in in the most holy place, uninvited, and offered up strange fire or strange incense unto Yahweh, and Yahweh dropped them. Do you think that they were going over their father's head and going about to establish their own righteousness? Mm -hmm. See where Paul's coming from. Let's go over to the 16th chapter in Numbers. Pick it up at one, please. Excuse me, one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Observe the month of a bill. Numbers, numbers 16 oh, and 1. I'm sorry. I, if okay. you have it, I'll read it. Number 16 and 1. Okay. Now Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Ab Abiram, the son of Eliab, and on the son of Peleg, sons of Reuben took me. And they rose up before Moses and certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So everybody in the congregation of Israel knew who these princes were. They're big shots. Go ahead. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and Yahweh is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourself above the congregation of, the, of Yahweh. And Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. Now, do you think that they were going about to establish the road righteousness? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. See, Paul's looking all the way back and seeing the examples that Yahweh used of these principles. And that's all we're doing is we're digging them out of the line of practice. It's not hard. It's quite simple. You just grab your mind, go back, 
and see what Paul's looking at. And there's tons of examples in here. I'm just picking out a few. But look at their attitude. Wherefore then, lift you up, lift yourselves up against above the congregation of the children of Israel. Don't we have the Holy Spirit just like you, Moses? Mm -hmm. That's just a typical of a rock on the line. That's what we're looking at back there. You know Moses had the Holy Spirit, and Yahweh was working with him and through him. And where the resistance is going to be is against the truth. Always against the truth. Let's go to the 28th chapter of Jeremiah. We'll get another example of this. Is this making any sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Pick it up right at one, please. Actually, before that, why don't you get the 23rd chapter, uh, verses 16 and 17. Then we'll go over to 28. Jeremiah 23, 16, 17 verses. Jeremiah 23 and 16. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, hearken not unto thy words of the prophet that prophesy unto you that may... That make you vain they may sorry read that again thus saith yahweh of hosts hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you they make you vain they speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of yahweh they say still unto them that despise me yahweh have said ye shall have peace and they sh and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Mm. Now let's go over to 28, Jack. Twenty-eight, you want to pick it up where you want to pick it up at one? Right in the beginning. We're gonna read the whole chapter. It's only 17 verses. Jeremiah 28 and 1. And it came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fourth and in the fifth month, that Hananiah, Hananiah the son of Azur, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of Yahweh, in the presence of the priests and all of the people, saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years will I bring again unto this place all the vessels of Yahweh's house that never can never I'm sorry. Never yeah, never with that person. King <laughs> of Babylon. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jes Jack, well, that person, <laughs> king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went unto Babylon, saith Yahweh, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah saith unto the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests, and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the house of Yahweh, even the prophet Jeremiah said, Yahweh do so it. The Yahweh performeth thy words, which thou hast prophesied to bring again the vessels of Yahweh's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon unto this place. Now here's Hanukkah, I mean Hananiah, and he's prophesying that he's going to break the yoke of the king of Babylon. He's going to do it. All right, keep reading. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thy ears and in the ears of all the people, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries 
and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophets which prophesy of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that Yahweh have truly sent him. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. Now you see, there's your witness in the prophets that Jeremiah had a yoke of wood upon his neck. The crying prophet. Go ahead. And Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus said Yahweh, Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Now, remember what we just read in the 23rd chapter about the prophets. Mm. And he's speaking in the name of Yahweh. Go ahead. Then the word of Yahweh came unto Jeremiah the prophet after that Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke off from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make them make for them yokes of iron. For that, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> For thus saith Yahweh of hosts, Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him, and I shall give him the beasts of the field also. I have given him the beasts of the field I have also. Given him the beasts of the field also. Now, do we know anybody else? A God king that was set up, that Yahweh set up mm -hmm. back in Exodus? Pharaoh. Ah. Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Bells are ringing now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet. Wow, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hear now, Hananiah. Yahweh have not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, but thou hast taught rebellion against Yahweh. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. Now look, folks, I'm running ahead of myself. But you witnessed the same thing going on in Los Angeles. That's a fact. Because Yahweh's purpose ain't nothing but a repetition. And those mysteries have got to run parallel down through the ages and dispensations. There had to be a contrast at the end of this age. By the grace of Yahweh, it's not us. But you're witnessing it. It's still going on. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, let's go see what Joshua had to say about this self-same thing. The 15th chapter of Matthew. Pick it right up at one. Matthew 15, one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I thought I had it. Then came Joshua scribes and then came to Yahshua scribes and Pharisees which are of Jerusalem saying why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders for they wash not their hands when they eat bread but he answered and said unto them why do ye also transgress co commandments of Yahweh by your tradition you see the contrast there mm -hmm. Go ahead. for Yahweh commanded saying Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. The honor not of his father or his mother, but shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandments of Yahweh of none effect by your traditions. Mm. Ye, ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people 
draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Stop right there and pick up Isaiah 28, 13. 29, 13. Isaiah 29 and 13. Wherefore, Yahweh saith, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of man. No. You mean to tell me that Yahshua was preaching out a lot of prophets also? Mm-hmm. Just a shame that people can't accept that or see it. But everything we understand is by revelation. Right. It's not their fault. Go ahead and keep reading back there in Matthew. Uh, Jennifer, please. Okay. Um, I'll start at eight. This yeah. people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answereth Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Yahshua said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drop? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, these are the things which defile a man, but to eat with an unwashed hand defileth not a man. Big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's going right in and he's looking at the inner man. And look what the source is and where it comes from. It doesn't come from the belly. It comes from your heart. Um, let's go over to the 15th chapter of Acts, please. Pick it up at one. Mm -hmm. Acts 15 and one. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Oh, no. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Was this before or after Pentecost? After. After. You sure? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. When, therefore, Paul and Barnabas had no small dissensions and disputations with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by, by the assembly, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, the, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the assembly and all the apostles and elders, and they declare all things that Yahweh had done with them. This was the first convention of Yahshua's folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. They're all gathered together in one place. Go ahead. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Mm. Now, these Pharisees who were believers in Yahshua, that's what you just read. Mm -hmm. They want to impose 
carnal ordinance on the Gentiles. Do you think they're trying to go about to establish their own righteousness? Mm -hmm. yeah. They want the Gentiles to be circumcised just like we were. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at physical law after the physical law has been accomplished or fulfilled. Read on. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago Yahweh made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And Yahweh which knoweth the hearts bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, where did that happen? Cornelius. Day of Pentecost. Yeah, Peter's second Pentecost. Gentiles Pentecost. Mm -hmm. The tenth chapter of Acts. Let's prove it. Acts 10, 34. Acts 10, 34. Now, this is going to tie right in with Romans 10, Jeff. Then, okay. then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that Yahweh is no respecter of person. So, isn't it funny how he's saying, then Peter opened his mouth and said. So, what's Peter doing? Preaching. He's preaching. That's not hard, but look at the way that Paul writes uh, that the uh, um, oh, um, Theophilus writes this. No, I mean that Luke writes this to Theophilus. It's 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 very deliberate. Oh. Go ahead. Yahweh is no respecter of persons. Go ahead. But in many, in, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which Yahweh sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yahshua the Messiah, he is master of all. That word I say, ye you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism of John preached how Yahweh anointed Yahshua of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost or spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were opposed, oppressed of the devil for Yahweh was with him. And we are all witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him, Yahweh raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of Yahweh, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Now, what is, what's he preaching? The resurrection. The resurrection. He's gospel. preaching the gospel. Who Yahweh slew and hanged on a tree. I think that's a death. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead and read on. Gotcha. 42. 42. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of Yahweh to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit. Okay, Spirit okay, here we go. We started in 34 and he said, Peter opened his mouth and said, and now here we are back in 43, or 44, and it says, well, Peter, yet what? Spake these words. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The Holy Spirit fell on them which heard the word. Now, hold your finger right there and go back over to Romans 10th chapter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. Pick it up at 13, please. At 13. Mm. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, 
Hearken unto me. Hold, hold on. What? Romans 10, 13. Oh, sorry. I'm in okay. X. I'm on okay. the X. Well, Jennifer, you stay right where you are. Okay. I am. Good. Okay. Romans 10 and 13. Now hold it right there. Jen, yeah. 44. 44 for us again. 40, 44, 41st. 41. I mean, 44. Okay, 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them which heard the word. Okay, stop. Go ahead over in uh, Romans 10 and 13. Romans 10 and 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. Read on. How then, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That was Peter sent by Yahweh down to Cornelius' house. Mm -hmm. To do what? Preach. Preach. Preach the gospel. See these tying together? It's not hard. Go ahead. In, 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 in Romans. Okay, uh, 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written... How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Yahweh, who have believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing. How does faith come? By hearing. Okay, and what's Peter doing? Preaching. And preaching, and, 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 and while he's preaching, what happened to them? They they got the, the, Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. the Holy Spirit fell on them. Or faith. Faith and the Holy Spirit are synonymous. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, uh, back in 17, reread. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yahweh. How but about I, that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, uh, uh, mm -hmm. to Galatians uh, 3 and 2, and just... Well, you can pick it up at one. Just hold that there, and we're going to go back to uh, Jennifer over in Acts. Okay, Acts, so you want 45 or? Pick up 44 one more time and bring it down. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now. Back in the 15th chapter of Acts, didn't Peter say that it fell on the Gentiles? They received purification of heart just like we did? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, keep reading, Jen. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify Yahweh, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which they have received the Holy Spirit as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Yahweh. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Now, this is where Christianity is going to take you to justify water baptism. Mm -hmm. Every time. See, 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 here it is. See, see, see. Go over to Acts 11. Next chapter. Uh, Acts 11 and 1. And the apostle. No, 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 not one. Uh, six. No. Then remembered I. Yes. No, 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 sixteen. No. Amen. No. It's uh, eleven sixteen or fifteen. I could start there. Okay, pick it up at twelve. Okay, and the spirit bade me bade me to go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me. And we entered into the man's house. So he had six brethren. Not Gentiles, but brethren. that were down to Cornelius' house. With him. Right? Yeah. Is that what you just read? Yes. Okay. And we entered into the man's house. That's Cornelius' house. Go ahead and read 11, uh, 13. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa. And call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. 
who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. Mm. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of Yahweh, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. See, he recanted. Mm -hmm. After he yep. said, can any man refuse water? And the boss brought it back to his remembrance. Didn't mm -hmm. Joshua tell them the Great Commission? I'll bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever I tell. Right. Yep. Well, here it is. Peter's got the Holy Spirit for seven long years. And he's wanting to dunk them down in water. Now, you see how the old man is giving the devil in the 10th chapter ammunition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to a carnal mind. See, Dr. Kinley had to bring these things out and show them to us. We never would have seen them. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, I'm sorry. He had to, it had to be revealed to him first so that he could bring it to us and share it with us. I'll tell you, it's something. And it all lines up, and it's pretty. And it's fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we were at a convention one time. I can't remember which one. And Bobby Sikowski was on the floor. And he looked out at the audience. He said, Are you all enjoying this? He says, Because I'm having fun. Mm. And you know what? It is a great joy. Mm -hmm. When you see it and you can share it with somebody else and the light goes off in somebody else. He's, he also said to me one time, show me something that's greater than a revelation from Yahshua the Messiah. <laughs> I said, well, you got me there, Bobby. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the... Um, Oh, to Galatians, uh, the third chapter. Galatians 3 and 2. No, speak it up right at 1. Galatians 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. O fools, O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Yahshua and Messiah have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you, Receive ye the spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that what we're reading about in the 10th chapter of, uh, of uh, Romans? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what Peter just experienced? Cornelius' house? Mm -hmm. Yep. So now, same thing's going on in Galatia. They're acting a fool, looking for carnal ordinances to be continued in this age. So Paul starts out by saying, oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Joshua the Messiah hath evidently set forth, crucified among you. You going to put him on the cross again? Doc Kinley put it this way in several of his lectures. There is no more sacrifice for sin. Yahshua is the end of sacrifice. There's no more sacrifice for sin. Keep reading the Galatians and we'll wrap it up here. This only would I learn of you, receive ye the spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith. He's, he's asking them a question boldly in this letter. How did you receive the spirit? By being dunked down in water? By celebrating the Passover memorial feast? By having your feet washed? Is that how you receive the Spirit? That's a good question he's asking them. I'll tell you, when I was first brought over to here, it made me think three times. Go ahead and, and keep reading. 
Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? You see, you can't restore carnal ordinances now. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're saying that he didn't fulfill them on the cross. And bring them to, uh, what's it say at the top of the cross? A three-letter word. I can't and see. Brought to an end. And they're done. They're no more. Part of they're they're just not a part of the New Testament, the New Covenant. Mm -hmm. And how many times do we have to go over to Jeremiah thirty-one, thirty-one, and try and slam that home? But this shall be the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith Yahweh. It's not going to be according to the one that He gave Israel and the house of Judah. And we trip over these three-letter words. And some of us have education, letters after our names, piece of paper that says, I got an education and spent years in a university or college. And we still trip over little three letter words. Not our fault. It's going to be revealed to us. You know more than any of us here, Joel. You got the, you got the most education. And what a blessing for him to see anything. It is. With the amount of education that he has. And others too. I'm not just picking on Joel. Okay, keep reading in, 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 in uh, uh, Galatians because we're almost out of time. Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, if it be yet in vain, mm -hmm. He, therefore, that minister to you in the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Now, is that a legitimate question for him to be asking? Mm -hmm. In this age, under this covenant? Absolutely. Can you see how the brethren or some of the brethren in Galatia are going about to establish their own righteousness? Right. Mm -hmm. We're still on the same train of thought, folks. And like I said, Paul had first-hand information because he had first-hand experience. And so did we. And that's why once we understand this New Testament, a new covenant, there ain't no going back to Egypt. We've been rescued from that. We've been drawn out of the world before we were even born. He's caused us to be sitting where we're sitting. He's caused us to understand what we understand, but we wouldn't see nothing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read a little further. We're about beating the clock here. Uh, is that at six? Even as Abraham believed Yahweh, and it was count accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So you see the comparison that he's making? Mm -hmm. He that ministered to you the spirit and the working of miracles, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed Yahweh and it was accounted to him for righteousness, Abraham wasn't given no works. That was prior to the Mosaic covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, seventh verse. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeth that Yahweh would justify the heathen through faith. Mm -hmm. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Mm -hmm. So yeah. then, so then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. 
For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of Yahweh, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Ah, there you go. You can't be justified in the law anymore. I'm talking about that little covenant. And nobody was able to make it anyway. Well, it was yet in fact. They failed miserably. Because by design, they couldn't keep it. So the just are going to live how? By faith. By faith. By faith. Go ahead, twelfth verse. And the law is not of the, is not of faith. That's a pretty but... blank statement, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, the law is not of faith. In case you haven't caught up to that, Galatians. All right, go ahead. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Mm -hmm. The Messiah have redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Did they put him on a tree? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, read out. That the blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Yahshua Messiah, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Mm -hmm. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now Abraham, now to Abraham and his seed, and his seed were the promise made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is the Messiah. And this I say, that the covenant that the covenant that was confirmed before of Yahweh in the Messiah, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul it, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. Now that's pretty blank right there. Mm-hmm. Read it again. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But Yahweh gave it to Abraham by promise. Mm -hmm. Wherefore then serveth the law? Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of, transg of transgression, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made and was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but the Elohim is one. It is the law then against the promise of, is the law then against the promise of Yahweh? Yahweh forbid. For if there had been a law given which could give life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. How about that? But there was no law given mm -hmm. that could give life. Go ahead. But the scripture have concluded. Now here's the, here's, here's the conclusion. And who's, where's the conclusion coming from? The scriptures have concluded. Mm, the scriptures have concluded. So where's the conclusion coming from? The scriptures. The scriptures. Law and the prophets. Isn't that what we started out with Paul? From morning to evening? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. But the scriptures have concluded. All understand that the promise by faith of Yahshua Messiah might be given to them that believe. Okay, we're out of time now, folks. I hope this made some sense to you. I hope you got something out of it. That's my joy to share anything that he shared with me. And it's yours. It's yours for the taking. And we just want to be grateful in the pandemic that we're in right now um i sent a, a, a text out that uh one of the brethren in albuquerque juan salas uh has COVID. so 
Dr. Kinley pointed out, the Apostle Paul said that we have to suffer all things common to man. So we are not exempt from viruses or uh, diseases um, and whatever society has to dish out. So some of us are going to get sick. And hopefully none of us will lose our physical lives over it. But Yahweh be praised. Pass it back to the moderator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That concludes our Wednesday evening class. We hold classes here on Zoom every Wednesday from 7 to 9 and every Sunday from 11 to 1. So we can all now stand and be dismissed with doxology taken from the last couple of verses in Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time now and ever let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.